All right, guys. Hey, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Uh, soil health in Minnesota is absolutely taking off. Before we get going, please subscribe, support the channel. We got some good goals to be able to help other farmers, and you're going to want to be notified uh, this summer when I start planting and getting crops going because it's going to be kind of a crazy ride this year. We're getting things set up. So soil health, what is soil health? John, how come you don't talk about no-till? You talk about soil health. Well, for one, a lot of no-tillers aren't soil health farmers. They're no-tillers. And uh, if they, they're, they're set up to where all they have to do is just take that one step into soil health, but they don't believe it works here or whatever. They're just fine where they're at. So not all no-tillers are good spokespeople for soil health. What is soil health? Soil health encompasses, so when you hear the words, I'm, we've just been in, just, just bombarded through the magazines and social media of, of sustainable, stewardship, regenerative, um, all them buzzwords uh, of farming, I'll fall under soil health. Your nutrient management, your pesticide management, your manure management programs, them fall under soil health. The principles reduce the tillage, keep the ground covered, armored, bring in diversity, break that monocropping back and forth system, uh, bring in a keep a living root before and after your cash crops instead of having bare ground go into winter and spring, keep a living root out there, and livestock. Uh, if possible, incorporate livestock. There's your one gimme. Not every farm, it, it's just not logical for every farm to incorporate livestock. So, What's happening in the soil health world? In the soil health world, it is taking off at light speed. One, schools, public schools in Minnesota are able to and starting to bring chefs back into the school. They are starting to be able to buy some fresh local products. The consumer is demanding better products. Look at the health of the economy or the, the health of society and look at the modern ag conventional ag and there's a huge correlation there uh look at the nutrient value coming off of the fields of of the farms and conventional farm so the consumer is demanding better food and there's a huge rise in farm to table direct to consumer like we sell the beef that way the neighbor sells sheep that way the other neighbor sells fruits and vegetables that way right off the farm to consumer. That is a growing and is growing very fast. Um, any farmers that want to talk about sustainability should figure out how to put one or two acres to fruits and vegetables and figure that market out because there's restaurants. Restaurants is, the restaurants buying fresh local is exploding. That is, over the next several years, that is gonna be huge. And uh, so I, I'm glad I've been on this forefront for several years. Um, so in 2019, we're going to have one, our own, we're coming out with our own agronomic data paper this winter to show the system and the agronomic data from every practice we did on the farm this year. Uh, going into 2020, we are setting up, so 2020, every acre has uh, two cash crops off of it. Some acres have the potential of three cash crops off of them. And uh, again, every year we're going to print the agronomic data to see how that goes. By 2022, we will be growing our own corn, soybean, rye, and oat seed stock. Uh, the only chemicals I want to buy, so I want no seed bill in 2022, uh, other than a couple little cover crop things that I'm just not going to deal with growing. Um, the only chemical I want and maybe some new genes on the corn and soybean, you know, to keep up. But um, the only chemical I want on the farm is a little bit of chemical to control the companion crop with our cash crop. Um, so that's how fast it moves on the ground. The state of Minnesota is seeing all this stuff kind of happening with soil health. And you got to keep them five principles in mind. Um, the state of Minnesota is seeing all this. So Commissioner Tom calls, brr, 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 get down here to this meeting. I went down to the meeting. Uh, they were creating the Minnesota Office of Soil Health. So the state of Minnesota sees what's happening, uh, but also sees the flip side is that out on the ground, we're moving so fast at light speed that there's no real agronomic data. The bankers aren't keeping up. Uh, crop insurance, legislators, None of these people are keeping up and farmers can't keep up to what's happening, what to do, how does it work. 
And so the Minnesota Office of Soil Health is wants to work with all these other agencies, pretty much anybody with an acronym, to get their data compiled to then redistribute because LSP isn't going to share their data with SHP, who's not sharing it with CHS. Um, uh, it, it just, you know what I mean? So everybody's got their own data. So all that's going to come together and then get redistributed. So everybody has the same agronomic data that came from themselves anyhow. So it's good data. And the University of Minnesota is investing 3 to $5 million dollars on uh, replicated data to start their own replicated data and programs so they'll have their own books of here's what we tried here's how it worked now the bankers legislatures crop insurance farmers have something to work with it's going to take a couple years for all this to even get caught up um, but it's out there and they also want to create uh, mentor programs. So at your local NRCS, you go in like, hey, I'd like to learn more about soil health farming. How can I get into this? You know, cover cropping. How do I get into cover cropping? They will have the book of agronomic data to show how it works, but they will also have a chart of farmers in that guy's area that he can call upon for advice, mentorship, go tour his farm, things like that. And that's why we're having the farm tour this fall on September 10th, is so farmers can come and see how different practices can actually work and be implemented on the farm. Um, so with all the bad data out there, how do we separate the good from the bad data? So if farmer Bob wants to, he gets on Google and starts Googling soil health. So soil health encompasses all them words, remember, all them buzzwords that everybody's trying to capitalize on. <coughs> we got these folks over here. You got tillage companies, uh, sales agronomists, so, uh, crop consultants, and farmers. And over here is so, 99% of the farmers are over here. They will all tell us how how none of it works here. They'll tell us about sustainability and stewardship, what works and what doesn't work, but they have nothing to do with the five principles of soil health. You realize I have no tillers on this side. No tillers of all people. People who fought for years against the crowd telling them that it don't work here and they still made it work here. Now they're on this side saying soil health and cover crops don't work here. And so even on this side, some no-tillers go in over here um, because no-till isn't soil health. No-till on its own helps you become sustainable, helps you be a better steward of the land. Um, yep, but it's still not soil health farming and it still doesn't make people uh, experts about sustainability and stewardship and, and soil health farming. There's many no-tillers on this side that are great advocates that are just like, you bet, you know. Um, so on this side, you've got John Deere running ads where they're showing their tractor, pulling a disc gripper, making the ground black, and then they'll have this very poetic, emotional, heartfelt paragraph about soil health <coughs> as they're promoting a, a disc gripper. How does that disc gripper keep the ground covered, help me reduce tillage, help me bring in diversity, and help me keep a living root? It doesn't. So we know that's just fake. They're just trying to capitalize on these buzzwords. Uh, same with the sales agronomists and farmers and crop consultants over here. They're just trying to stay relevant with these buzzwords just to stay in the limelight. Uh, the crop, you realize how many crop consultants and sales agronomists are on this side that I've, I've spoken with over the last several years. They're the first ones that were like, ain't working, not in our area, doesn't work here, blah, 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 blah. And now that they see that, hey, we have some customers going down the road because down the road, the other co-op believes in these five principles. And if somebody wants to learn about it, They've done their research, and they will help do it. Um, so you've got good agronomists and sales agronomists and crop consultants, and you got the bad ones. So you got the five things. And you just ask them, where are you in this spectrum of these five things? How do you feel about your pest and nutrient management and manure management plan? Do you walk off the road and see, oh, I got a couple aphids. Let's do the whole field. Uh, do you just, you know, are you putting down fall anhydrous, fall nitrogen? Are you putting all your nitrogen down pre-plant and stuff like that? Where do you fall under this stuff? Plain and simple, if they're not falling under the five principles of soil health with the management programs, 
They're fake. They're just trying to stay relevant. They're just trying to get your money. But over here, you've got legitimate tillage companies, the strip till companies, and you've got, you know, Dawn has all their little nutrient management things and all their uh, cover cropping and intercropping things. You got Amity Air uh, that's building a pretty thing that's going to be coming out here in the next year or two that can do your, your row cropping. It can do drilling. It can do side dressing with or without covers. It can do row cropping with or without covers at the time of seeding. I mean, it just is a fantastic machine coming out in a couple of years. Um, and so over here, you got the Cody Nelsons of Minnesota over here. He's a crop consultant. He's going to be out there. He farms under the five principles. The farmers that he works with, he moves them to the five principles. So you have legitimate data over here. Our channel. This channel is not about marketing John Stevens Maple Grove Farms. This channel is about marketing soil health and helping farmers with real agronomic data help farmers make good decisions and move forward to be truly sustainable and uh, to be here in a few years. And and so it's, it's funny. So it, that's how we're going to get through this. Um, but guys, I'm going to end right here. This, this is a never-ending conversation. We're only beginning. Um, so stay tuned to the farm this year. And uh, for right now, thank you very much for watching. Ignore the chaff. Find the good resources. Uh, find the people that are under these five principles. Them are the people you take advice from. Them are the people you listen to. You got the internet news channels here that you can know and trust. You got TMZ and CNN on this side that want to have talking points about stewardship, sustainability, regenerative ag, uh, but implement nothing. And so, guys, have a good day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.